Hey guys, welcome back to Math Principles. Last time we were talking about solving equations, and we started with some very, very basic ones. Okay, where we just drew the vertical line down the middle, and I said we were going to skip a couple of steps, and then we were going to use reverse order of operations and inverse operations to get that variable by itself. The ones that we looked at last time were a little bit simpler than these. Okay, here we see some parentheses, some extra terms, and this is where we have to add these extra steps. Okay, well, really just one of these extra steps right now. After we draw that vertical line, before I can start solving and getting these t's by themselves, the problem is, for instance, on example six here, I have two different t's. Before I can get that t by itself, I need to make sure that I have only one t. So I need to simplify both sides of this equation first. So that's my step number two. After the vertical line, I want to simplify each side. Now, keep in mind, we're simpli simplifying each side separately, one side at a time. On these examples, we'll see one side is already pretty simplified. We've got just a constant on one side of each of those equations. But the next ones that we're going to see after these, we need to remember that we're going to simplify each side separately. Well, let's get to it. So first off, I have 2 times the quantity, x plus 8 minus 9 equals 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw that vertical line down the middle. Then I'll start simplifying. Okay, now simplifying, I want to get rid of those parentheses. And the only way that I can get rid of these parentheses is to distribute. I'd like to do x plus 8, but since I don't know what x is, I can't add 8 to it. So I have to distribute to get rid of those parentheses. And that will give me 2x, bring down the plus, 2 times 8 is 16, bring down the minus 9, equals 5. Now, I want to combine my like terms. Now, my like terms here are this 16 and this minus 9. So I'll put those two together. And 16 minus 9 is going to give me 7. So I've got 2x plus 7 still equals 5. Now, I have that left side about as simplified as it can be. This looks like one of those equations from last time. So this is what we're going to solve. We'll start by subtracting 7 from each side. On the left side, 7 minus 7 gives me 0. So I have 2x plus 0, which is just 2x. On the right side, 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Remember, just like we said last time, we can do whatever we want to an equation as long as we do the same thing on both sides. So I can subtract that 7 from both sides, and that will keep the equation balanced as long as it's on both sides of that line. Now, that x is still being multiplied by 2, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I have 1 times x, or just x. And then negative 2 divided by 2 gives me negative 1. So we have x equals negative 1. Now, we can take that negative 1 back to the original and check to make sure that it works. 2, or excuse me, negative 1 plus 8 is going to be 7. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 9 gives us 5. So the solution checks out, and we can say that x equals 1. Okay, next up, we have negative 7 equals 3 times the quantity, t minus 5 minus t. We're going to start out the same way. I'm going to draw that vertical line right down the middle of the equation, and that will help me keep it balanced. Now, I need to simplify this right side. I've got t's all over the place. The only way that I can get those C's together is by getting rid of those parentheses. And the only way to get rid of those parentheses is to distribute. So I'll take that 3 and multiply that 3 by everything in those parentheses. So 3 times T is 3T. Bring down that minus sign. 3 times 5 is 15. And just bring down that minus T. Now we didn't do anything with that negative 7 on the other side, so we just bring it right on down. Now, I have like terms that I want to combine. And the like terms that I see are this 3t and this minus t. Now, when we have, for instance, on this previous example, the 16 and the 9 back to back, it was really easy to put those two together. Just do 16 minus 9 and get 7. But when we have terms between our like terms, sometimes it can get a little tricky. Sometimes we'll look at this 3t and this t and put them together and try to say that that's 4t. 
and that would be incorrect. Or what a lot of students will try to do, and don't do this, but I'm just showing this to you for example, they'll see this minus t, and they'll say, well, I'll add t here and here. And guys, the reason we don't do that is we have to keep the equation balanced. We have to do the same thing on both sides. Right here, I'm adding t twice on one side and no times on the other side of the equation. So this is not how we would combine like terms. What we want to do instead is simply put these two terms together. So we have positive 3t and minus 1t. If I put those two together, that's just going to be 2t. And we haven't done anything with the minus 15, so we just bring that down. And then we bring down the negative 7 over here. Now, I, I've got this equation as simplified as it can be. Now it's time to start solving. So that t is getting multiplied by 2, and then they're subtracting 15. So now it's time for reverse order of operations and inverse operations to get that variable by itself. So the last thing that they, we said was they're subtracting that 15. So the first thing we're going to do is add that 15 to both sides. Minus 15 and plus 15 cancel. So I would have 2t plus 0, or simply 2t. Then on the left side, I've got negative 7 plus 15. So think number line again, guys. If you're in the negatives and you add 15, you're moving to the right. Now, if you're at negative 7 and you add 15, you're crossing over 0 into the positives. So negative 7 plus 15 is going to end up being a positive 8. We're almost done. T is still multiplied by 2, so we'll divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 cancels, and we would have 1t, or simply t. And then over here on the left, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we have 4 equals t. Now, we want to take that 4, sub it back into the original, and make sure that it works. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3. And negative 3 minus 4 would give us negative 7. The solution checks out. We can say that 4 equals t. Next up. We have here negative 10 plus 4 times the quantity 3p plus 10 equals 18. And I want to solve it. So the first thing we're always going to do is draw that vertical line. It's going to help us keep that equation balanced. Next up. I want to simplify this left side. The only thing that I can do to simplify this left side is to distribute that 4. So I'll have 4 times 3p, which is going to be 12p, bring down that plus sign, 4 times 10 is 40, still equal to 18, still with that negative 10 plus out front. Next up, time to combine some like terms. And my like terms here are this negative 10 and this positive 40. Now, if I combine those two, negative 10 and positive 40, that's going to give me a positive 30. So I have 12p plus 30 equals 18. Okay, now we're almost there. The left side is simplified. Now it's time to start isolating that variable. So p is getting multiplied by 12, and then they're adding 30. So we will subtract 30 from each side. 30 minus 30 cancels. It's 0. So I have 12p plus 0, or simply 12p, equals 18 minus 30. Now, if you're 18 and you're taking away 30, you're going into the negatives. Okay, so that's going to take you to negative 12. Well, they're multiplying by 12, so we will divide both sides by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1, so I have just p. And negative 12 divided by 12 is negative 1. So we have now that p equals negative 1. So now we'll take this negative 1, sub it back into the original, and make sure that it works. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 10 is 7. 4 times 
7 is 28. Negative 10 plus 28 is going to be 18. Solution checks out. We can say that P equals negative 1. All right, now our last one over here. We have 4Y plus 3 times the quantity, Y minus 2 plus 8 equals negative 26. We're always going to start the same way. Vertical line through that equal sign. Next up, I want to simplify each side as much as possible. That negative 26 is already pretty well simplified, but I can still simplify this left side. So I'll start by distributing that 3. Okay, 3 times y is 3y. Bring down the minus sign. 3 times 2 is 6. Bring down the plus 8. Still equal to negative 26. And we didn't touch that 4y, so we'll just bring that right on down. Now we want to combine our like terms. Now this time we have two sets of like terms. I've got the 4y and the 3y and the negative 6 and the 8. So we'll put each of those pairs together. 4y plus 3y gives us 7y. Negative 6 plus 8 gives us positive 2. Still equals negative 26. Now we've got that left side about as simplified as it can get. So the next thing that we're going to do is solve. Reverse order of operations, inverse operations to get that variable by itself. So they're multiplying by 7 and then adding 2. The first thing we're going to do is subtract that 2 from both sides. 2 minus 2 is 0, so I'll have 7y plus 0, or simply 7y, and then negative 26 minus 2. So you're already at negative 26, and you're taking away 2 more. You're getting deeper into the negatives by 2. That's negative 28. Okay, now we're almost done. Divide both sides by 7, and we'll get y equals negative 4. Then we'll take that negative 4, sub it back into the original just to make sure that it works. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus negative 18 is going to be negative 34. Negative 34 plus 8 gives us negative 26. Solution checks out. We can say y equals negative 4. Now, guys, these equations might look a little bit different from yesterday, but they're really all the same. Okay? We draw the vertical line down the middle. We simplify each side. We use reverse order of operations and inverse operations to get the variable by itself. Check your answer. The only difference is yesterday, we didn't have to simplify each side because they were already simplified. Now we do. Okay? All right, guys, there's an assignment posted to Canvas. Uh, this video is posted to Canvas. If you have any questions at all, please make sure you contact me. I look forward to hearing from you.